vouchers, Chrysler LeBaron. Payments on said vehicle being several months in arrears. I have been asked to read this open letter from Walter Hogarth, president of the Patrolman's Credit Union. No one is more acutely aware of the many claims January makes on the Patrolman's depleted purse than is your credit union. And your credit union is subject to the same strains and drains. Your credit union is no more than the aggregate of its members' finances, and your credit union cannot allow its authorized agents to be assaulted with crowbars and tire chains in the performance of their assigned responsibilities, however unpleasant these may be. People, there's a kernel of truth in that. And let's keep in mind that we only buy more trouble, and in January, that's about all we can afford when we wreak vengeance on the bearer of bad tidings. Having said which, I allow myself the uh, speculation that if there's justice in the universe, the deity has reserved a special circle in hell for the repo man. Oh. the kind of pain, Frank, that makes a man want to break formation and lay waste to whole villages of undesirables. Gee, I would take care of Howard. Uh, wouldn't I like to? A man can't see me until 3.15. Hey, Lieutenant, I'll tell you what. Try these guys right here, okay? Four dentists, no waiting. Really? Yeah. And uh, they're not too stingy with the laughing gas, either. My center check. Yes, I did. Well, I, I, uh, I mailed it on Tuesday, so they should probably have it by now. Look, I gotta be on stakeout in 20 minutes. I can't talk. Ma, please, you gotta calm down. Yes, I will call them. As soon as I hang up with you. Listen to me now. I don't care what they said. They will not put his bed out on the street. I promise you that. Look, I gotta go right now. I love you, and don't worry. Goodbye. Something wrong, Detective? No. I got a hundred and two bucks in my checking account. And I owe my old man's nursing home three hundred. They keep hocking my mother for the money. They keep telling her they're gonna throw them out in the street if we don't pay up. I don't know what I'm going to do. Can I float you alone? Oh, no. No, I insist. <laughs> you just pay it back when you can. Oh. What's the matter? Oh. Oral discomfort here, Rick. You need a good dentist? No. Oh, man, it's all right. I got one. There you are. Thank you very much. My father's. Oh, it's January. Say no more. Did you or did you not say, meet you at the breakers for breakfast? 
I told you, man, my car wouldn't start. The car wouldn't start. Well, then you call on the telephone, okay? Well, I tried to call, too, and your line was busy. Until 5.30 in the morning, yeah. Joe. Forget about it. Hey, hey, Lewis, come on. Come Wait on. a second. I am not one of your bimbos. Get that straight. And besides, it's the morning of my birthday. I know. Hey, did I hear someone say birthday? Uh, no, you did not. Hey, big girl, isn't this the time they celebrate your natal event about this time of year? No, little guy, it is not. And if you blow the whistle, Renko, I mean... Excuse me, Lewis. Yes? Would you come with me? I have a little surprise for you. Surprise? Yeah, just have a seat. Come here, come here. We can fit. Come on, 
Hey. We're on the way. Right. Come on. Oh, no. All right. Group shot. Group shot. Okay, Robin, you sit on my lap. All right. Okay? And when the light flashes, everybody say cheese. No, no, don't say cheese. Say part cheese. There's the light. One, two, three. Part cheese. <laughs> You know how Houdini died? Getting hit in the stomach when he wasn't ready. Yeah, well, maybe you should start working on your disappearing act. You know, I can't believe it. You can't take a joke. I mean, you have no sense of humor. You have the sensitivity of a rock. Hey, I spoke for 50 bucks right when I'm totally broke. I thought you'd like it. Joe, you embarrass me. Don't you see that? And besides, now people might think that we're doing it. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. I get you a stripper for your birthday and people think we're going to be making it. You know what your problem is? You're sublimating your sexual needs into anger and then uh, projecting it all onto me. Great, Joe. Real deep. <laughs> Yeah, this is unit 2203. How much did they get? Do you believe 1.6 million? Oh! 1.6 million. What would you do with all that dinero, Robin? Mm, I don't know. Exercise your imagination. Well, I guess I'd pay off all my debts, all my family debts. Maybe I'd buy a, a house. Yeah. You know, I'd buy me a house, maybe somewhere out in the country, overlooking a lake. I see. What's the matter? Nothing. Where go? Nothing. It's a matter, officer. Yeah. All right, Officer Rinko. All right, fine. It's just if somebody gave me that kind of large yes, you can bet I'd give some to my partner. I would give you some, Rinko. After I'd begged, after I'd humiliated and degraded myself. <laughs> Rinko. All right, fine. It's all right. Give it. That's four blocks. <laughs> Jerry from the Heights. The guy came out blasting a shotgun. Nobody had a choice. They do the armored car? Dallas the Donuts. A cop was, uh, got the money, though. Couldn't find a dime in the car. They've been advised. Let's interrogate them in separate rooms. See if they want to talk before their lawyers get here. Uh, Francis, the two security guards died. There was some initial confusion, but apparently 
They will both be away. In the truck. We'll interrogate them on the basis of double felony murder. Have Ray come to my office, would you, Phil? We're about to be hip deep in media. Uhuru. Is that how you want to be booked? Just Uhuru? You have lawyers you want contacted? I want a public... KL 53935. Is that your lawyer's phone number? What's your lawyer's name? You don't talk to me, you hair! You want a traitor? You talk to the scared little white girl! Oh, no. Hey, homecoming queen, what you gonna do? Get out of here, Get your hands off me, you pig! Get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here, you pig! Get out of here, you pig! In May 1981, I helped three other people rob a gun shop in Santa Fe, New Mexico. In November 1981, I planned and helped rob a convenience store in York, Pennsylvania. In February 1982, I was present when a bank was robbed in Newark, New Jersey. Nobody was hurt. This is very interesting. But right now, I've got a fresh double homicide. Where can we find... I won't implicate anyone else. I will not give information on anyone else's whereabouts. Tell us some of the places you've lived in. Where were you living? I went underground in 1970 after the Broom Street explosion. Not 1970. Now, yesterday, over the past two weeks. I lived at 1428 Decker till Tuesday, and then I lived at the Hotel Crane. Christina Beck. You requested a public defender. My name's Joyce Davenport. I suggest you stop talking with the sergeant and that we confer. Ms. Davenport, Ronald Schuster is here. He'd like a conference with you and the client. Shoot? Christina, I want you to know that you've done nothing to compromise yourself or anybody else. You have done nothing but respond to a charged and a dangerous and a stressful situation. Uhuru's authorized me to say that she feels no betrayal. Christina, we also want you to know that political solidarity aside, we think it's just plain good sense to coordinate strategy so we can maximize our leverage and benefit from whatever cooperation anybody might give. Hey, Christina, are you hearing me? It's over. Nothing is over. I think for the moment, if we can agree that all dealings with the authorities should be through counsel. Absolutely. All right, Christina. I have to tell you, you cut quite a figure in my emotional life when I was training for the law. I guess even before that. You're gracious to say so. How are we going to do with her? Christina Beck, it seemed to me you got through. She was willing to cooperate. With whom? I think she'll let us bargain for She'll let me bargain. We'll coordinate in about half an hour. Uh, listen, I'm afraid lunch is a goner. I'm sorry. Okay. Suppose any of those addresses she gave us are live? I tried the Hotel Crane especially. That was the most recent. Some baits and coffee. Do you have any names? Mm -hmm. Better add an open one. Right. 
Yes. A little bit more. Uh, there for more than 10 years, moved through a network of affiliated organizations, which include the PRO, BRD, the 14th of October group, a black separatist organization which calls itself Uhuru. Agent Davis, new Captain Farrello? Uh, could I talk to you for a minute? Oh, certainly you may. Can you run it down for me? Six of them in two cars got $1.6 million from a Johnstone armored car about 8.30 this morning at 4th Street downtown. They shot and killed both guards. We have two of the robbers. The third one's dead. That's William Jones? Correct. Now you know as much about it as we do. What about the guards? Is that execution style? That's the way that Frazier and Jones always do it in the back of the neck at close range. Excuse me, Captain. I thought we might cancel the lunch breaks. Good idea, Phil. I also thought we might try this Chinese takeout. Good. Well, uh, what can I order for you, gentlemen? Oh, uh, FBI agent Davis, Sergeant S. Jones. How do you do, sir? Fine. Uh, let me tell you, the uh, litmus test of Chinese cooking is dumplings in hot oil. <laughs> Great. I was supposed to do a trade legation in Shanghai and got hooked. Excuse the interruption. Think back on it, Captain. They took that armored car off. I think you can also safely assume that at least some of these names were involved. And there's a list of safe houses for you to run down. I don't know how current this information is. It's certainly worth checking out. Oh, uh, that name right there? That's the purchasing agent. Lenore Kramer. She gets the car. She gets the safe houses. How do you know? Was that a, a car rental on a phony card? Yes. That's the way she does it. That's the way anyone would do it. Listen, I pick her up if I were you. Do we have any federal paper on her? Nothing current. Bill. Bill. Yes, Francis. Let's see if we have any warrants, city warrants, outstanding on Lenore Kramer. If not, let's pick her up on charges. What charges? Conspiracy. What's going on, gentlemen? We're getting some Chinese eating, Captain. Man, these menus are like a novel. Let's just order two dozen from column A, two dozen from column B, and then let's get back to work, okay? Yes, sir. I hope you ordered double for Lenore Kramer. Hardly hear the mouth on her. Identify yourselves. Ms. Kramer, I'm Officer Hill. This is Officer Rinko from the Hill Street Station. We have a warrant for your Show arrest. me your identification cards. Read me the warrant. Conspiracy! Let's go, ma'am. Oh, you have nothing. You don't even have the barest fragment of a connection. Pathetic fascist after death spasms. You go ahead, coerce your usual suspects, oppress your usual suspects. Man, you want to be quiet and just get out this door, please? Oh, yes, cave dweller. Yes, leopard suit. Redneck, lackey, fat piece of garbage. Aaron Boys and Jay Sign. All right, ma'am. All right, ma'am. Right, ma okay, buckwheat. You just keep your mouth shut. Let's go. He's not so fast. Well, so far this morning, I've destroyed 20 alien planets, 57 battle stars, and a couple hundred thousand Nazi submarines. I'm about ready to beat my quarters into plowshares. I'm going across the street for some coffee. Anybody want anything? All right, you greenhorn dude. I 
And they ain't on the house. A buck ten a piece, money man. Yeah, have a cookie. You want a cookie? Hey, 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 stupid, stupid police officer. you rent a car for? <laughs> John Wilkes Booth. Oh, or which car? The Pontiac Lee Oswald. You think it's funny, Lenore? <laughs> you think murder's funny? I think you're funny. I think... I think you're disgusting and pathetic. You drag me in here on some kind of senile information. There were cars and apartments rented, Lenore. You do have a history. Oh, well, no, she's a real estate agent now. God, I wish I had been the purchasing agent, because I'd better take your usual six years to run it down. Yes, Mick. Yes, I understand. Keep us in touch, will you? Thanks. Come on! Uh, please, put it over there on that table. There's no change. It's still on the operating table. It's going to be a while yet. Oh, of course, sure. Here, uh, keep the change. Go home. Thank you. I'm in our armed and on ready alert. We can hit the bricks in less than 30 seconds. We can be anywhere in this precinct within 10 minutes. How's that coming? Dental treatment will just have to wait. Mark my words, Frank. This one's gonna end up on the street. Captain, we drew blanks on Agent Davis' list of possible safe houses. One on Haley burned down four years ago when Borellis and Smiljanich found a daycare center at Lombard Street. Agent Davis's information seems a little dated. Right. We got signatures of the uh, rental car agreements. Well, my graphologist says there's no way Lenore Kramer could have forged those names. Damn. Thanks, Phil. Cleveland, March 21st, 1968. Arson, Army Recruiting Center. You were the buyer. Maybe. Maybe. You got that blood on your hands. 
San Francisco, February the 2nd, 1969. Bomb went off in the van, parked outside a draft registration office. It's assault on a government official in New York. Direct records of destruction in Tulsa. Right, right, go ahead, run it. Let's talk about your old munitions, buddy. Norman Downs, you remember him? The guy you're supposed to be in love with? The guy blew himself up? Tell me something, Lenore. Is he better in bed than he was making bombs? All right. There were apartments rented, and there were cars. Agent Davis, may I see you for a minute? Okay, Lenore. Where's her counsel? She refused one. It might interfere with her martyrdom. I'm letting her go as soon as the paperwork's done. Why? The signature on the car rental form isn't hers. We checked it against a Washington file. In fact, we don't show anything connecting her with the movement for the last three years. Look, Ferrillo, I know this girl. Just let me work on her a couple more hours. The paperwork can take a couple more hours. Frank, Frank, look at this. The license number we got on the car at the Dorsey shooting matches the license of the second vehicle used in the armored car robbery. Same people, you sure? Yes, and they checked the $50 bill the shooter gave the store owner. It's from the million six. Dorsey walked right into it. Probably heard a policeman was shot. Dorsey, how is he? Not good. They've tied the shooter's car license to your people. Captain, unless you figure they can break the laws of time and space, our clients could hardly be capable of... Uh... If you'll be quiet, I'll tell you what I think they're capable of. You're right. Their only connection with this shooting is moral and practical. As a legal matter, they're innocent. And if they give us information that leads to their accomplices, they'll be doing themselves a lot of good. I'd like to hear some specific numbers. I want some specific information, and I want it fast. That's all. What's your take on him? Captain? Has he got juice with the DA's office? If he says to deal, they'll deal. Clearly, Christina and Uhuru have to make their own decision. But it's our responsibility to indicate to them just how uh, strong a card this is. If either chooses to provide names, an address, we use it to buy as much as we can for both of them. Deal? Deal. See you in a little while. Despicable affair, Henry. What? Oh, it started off with a small, unattended occlusal of the lower number one bicuspid, and now it has eaten clean through to the pulp. Oh. There's a pointed analog here, Henry. How years of liberal permissiveness have allowed a few destructive malcontents to burrow into the enamel of American society. Oh! Judas. <clears throat> we are the dentists of society, Henry, fighting a losing battle with urban decay. You say it goes slow releasing Lenore Kramer? No. Let her go. I'm putting it through. I don't think she's going to sign the false arrest waiver. That's the least of my problems right now. How's Dorsey? He was gut shot. Any blood? Mick says they're okay for now. I watched 
this woman spit poison, Frank. And Davis spit it right back at her. There was a time when Lenore Kramer and I probably read the same books, marched in the same marches. Now she's just a robber, I'm just a cop. That what happens to every idea, Frank. That what happens to everything. I'll speed up Leo with the paperwork. It's okay. I think they're enjoying it. Frank! What's the problem today? My life. I've... It's in a shambles, Frank. I'll... I'm a mess. I'm useless. Well, the judge and I... Oh, never mind. I've been compulsively eating since 8 a.m. yesterday. Faye. And uh, now Frank Jr. What about Frank Jr.? Well, he wants to trade me in on a new mother. Why? Because I'm not tall. I'm not perfect. I'm not beautiful, and I don't treat him like a little prince the way certain people do. Certain people? Ms. Davenport, as for instance. Oh, come off it, Faye. I don't think Joyce has even seen him since the ski trip at Christmas. Well, she certainly made a hell of an impression on him. He thinks she's the best thing since Pac-Man. Frank, whose food is this? Why aren't they eating it? Faye. I think maybe you're exaggerating a, a mild schoolboy crush here. Am I? Every time I say anything to him, he throws Joyce Davenport in my face. That's all I hear. Like Twenty times a day, he compares me to her. And she's the good fairy, and I'm the wicked witch of the West, who tells him that he has to clean up his room or, or turn off the TV. I know I'm being stupid, Frank, but... Well, I lost one popularity contest to that woman, and then I... I just don't think I can handle another. Uh, it's, it's just gone in on this Oh. Saigon Sally's 1968. Oh. Hmm. Looks valuable enough for the old jawbone. Hmm. How about? Faye, being a single parent is not a popularity contest. You're telling me? It's nothing to be concerned about. It happens to all boys his age, and it never lasts. With me, it was Lana Turner. Yeah, but was Lana Turner dating your father? You're his mother. He knows that. That's an attachment nobody can break or wants to. Will you tell that to your son? I'll have dinner with him tonight. Yeah, this is good. Right. You like it? Mm-hmm. Well, there's another box here. Okay. Come on, pal. Just sign. We'll take you in. You know, first you get Andy a hooker for his birthday. Now you got to give me a performing slab of beef for mine. You just don't realize that most people are not stuck in their glandular development the way you are. Have a nice day. You know, I never knew you were such a prude, Lucy. Uh, a prude? Oh, great. I just don't like it, you know, when you, somebody makes a spec on me for a cheap laugh. Hey, it wasn't cheap. There, you drive. Hey, Luce. What's the matter? Uh, man, I 
place but my pants. You're kidding. Let me see. Come on. Let me see. Take them off. What do you mean, take them off? I'm not taking them off. Just take them off. There's a tailor shop about three blocks down there. I'll take them in there for a quickie. Or would you rather walk into the precinct like this, huh? Come on, I'll try. Man, I was hoping to get another winner out of these pants. At least with one pair left. Yeah, well, if you weren't so busy spending your money on the nightclub circuit, maybe you would have enough to buy another uniform. All right, Luce, I've had it. You don't owe me, so don't tell me how to run my life. So just can it. And hurry up with the pants. What are you doing? Lucy! What's the matter? Did you lose your sense of humor, huh? I gotta look at the wound, Captain. Well, I haven't seen too many that were worse. I don't think he's gonna make it. Uh, I gotta go. I'll, I'll call you when there's more news. Yeah, right. I was the wrong type, but I gave anyway. Oh, well, maybe you ought to sit down. Mrs. Baker, please come to admitting. Mrs. Baker, please come to admitting. He's been in there five hours, Mick. I mean, I mean, that's good, isn't it? it if he's held on this long. Hey, we weren't going to talk about it anymore, remember? That was the deal. Well, he's got a chance, right? We don't talk about it. Mrs. Barker, please come to admitting. Mrs. Barker, please come to admitting. Got any hobbies? Boyfriend. Tell me about your boyfriend. Come on, you gotta have a boyfriend. He didn't like the idea of me being a cop. Do you have a girlfriend? Me? No. I, I think I'm too hard to live with. No, you're not. I mean, I think you're just right. It could be their fault, you know. Dr. Mondonio, report to intensive care. Dr. Mondonio, report to intensive care. Oh, look at that. These guys are just great. They hit the vein clean every time. You know what you ought to do when you get home? Eat some peanut butter and drink plenty of juice. I guess I should get used to giving this stuff, huh? living out in Arizona. We've been trying to reach her since the shooting. The brother's in town, but he's on vacation. Do we know where? His plant thought Taft Lake, but I tried all the lodges and I haven't been able to. Keep trying. 
Can I hear it on the radio? He's down in port. You wanted to see me? Schuster was just here. We think Christina knows more, but... Ms. Croydon is prepared to come forward. How much time? Fifteen minutes, twenty max. I'll talk to my client. Thank. About Dorsey. I'm sorry. Counselor. My client wouldn't agree to share. We've made a separate proposal to the captain. So I've been informed. You want me in there? No, thank you. Not necessary. Uh, could you excuse us, please? What do you want to hang around here for? Why don't you just take off? No. Are you sure? You don't need to be here. Please, Mick, you gotta stick by me. I, um... I don't want to be alone yet. Okay. Uh, we could get a cup of coffee and I, um... I could take you through the paperwork if you feel up to it. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So let's go over this. The three still out are Frazier, Thornton Williams, and Timothy Smith. Frazier's friend's address is 393 Denoyer. If the address leads to arrests, it could be worth eight years off a sentence. Subtract another five for the names, another five for in-court testimony, and then let's assume uh, we do some business on your background. The repentant lost sheep of the upper middle class, combined with the fact you're a mother, a child six years old, that's probably worth another five. Off a sentence of 35 years, and assuming you never pulled a trigger, we're down to 10 or 12. You might still have a life left. You better hurry up. Uhuru's going to beat you to it. Go ahead. Hmm? Go ahead! Hey. Why not? Attention all occupants of 393 Denoya Street. This is the police. You are ordered to come out with your hands up. You will be taken into custody. You will not be hurt. This is Captain Ferrillo of Hill Street Station. I repeat, you are completely surrounded. Come out with your hands up. Nobody's picking up. Valentine, the fire department in place. Yes, sir. And all the tenants of the adjoining apartment building have been evacuated, sir. All right, all personnel prepare for deployment of tear gas. Attention, Harold Frazier, 
Thornton Williams, Timothy Smith, and all other occupants of 393 Denoyer Street. Come out now with your hands up. This is your final warning. Lines working is still nothing. Kamiki, proceed with CN deployment. says they could all be suicides. Or rather this one. Frazier. Opened fire on the other two and shot himself. Gets the description of Dorsey's killer. Yeah. Hey, Captain, you want to see something? Burned up over a million dollars here, Captain. Just do kerosene on it, you know? Frank, Frank, Dorsey's brother Paul. He heard them in the news. He's gonna call their mother. Oh, we tried. Captain. Uh, just did a little survey here. How do you feel? Matter of fact, not too well. Yeah. How about you, Lieutenant? Fine. Yeah. What'd you both have for lunch? Ham sandwich and a cork. Oh, Captain. Yeah. Excuse me. Go home. Hey, do me a favor, would you please? Call Faye and explain to her why she's sick or is about to be sick. Tell her I'm in no condition to have dinner with Frank Jr. Hey, it's a look. You know, Leo, you know what I love about this guy? He's kept a sense of humor, huh? Good old Joe never loses a sense of humor. Hey. Are we still having dinner tonight or what? I promise I'll go home and I'll change, okay? If that makes you happy. Okay. Yes, we're having dinner. It's my birthday. What do you think? What's this line? I'm afraid so, Captain. Mayflower's on high seas here, and a crew's come down with scurvy. Mm. Howard? Frank, come here. Taste of chloral acetophenone. 
plays pin the donkey with the old duodenum. I whiff no tear gas, Howard, and I'm sick as a cow. Oh. You know what this is, don't you? It's no more. It's trying to poison us. She's gotten into the air conditioning ducts. It's just a theory, right? Flat ginger ale settles the stomach. I think that's an all wives thing. You're talking about my mother. <laughs> if I die, promise me you'll sue. Count on it. Good? Mm hmm. I should go home. I'm humiliating myself. That's absurd. I love the sounds of peristalsis. I scared myself today, Frank. Why? I hated that girl so. Christina Beck? She's partly responsible for a lot of people dying today. You know, there was a time when I was just as fascinated with abstractions, just as sure I had a hotline to the truth. I wanted to hurt her for all that smugness. I wanted to make her know the pain she had caused with her dilettante ideas. And at the same time, I felt old. I felt old. And the whole time I was with her, I just wanted to cry. Sure, we must have walked ten miles. Twelve, maybe. Your feet hurt? Nah. Orthopedic shoes. <sighs> this one's mine. So, um... Are you sure you're not hungry? We could still get something to eat. Jews and Italians, you kind of eat your way through grief. I sort of got a stomach for it, you know? Yeah. Well, um... What are you gonna do? Are you gonna come into work tomorrow? Yeah, I think. Because you, if you don't want to, you don't have to, you know. I'll worry about it in the morning. Okay, then. <laughs> 